Today, we're finally going to talk about something good in the Star Wars universe because all these acolytes and skeleton crew are already pretty tired. Over the past few weeks, a lot of interesting news and leaks have accumulated on the film Mandalorian and Grogu, which will replace the fourth season and will be released in theatres in early 2026. Right now, John Favreau, Dave Filoni and their team are preparing for filming, which should start in a couple of weeks after the release of this video, and spies have already visited the place where the scenery for the film was built, who took several pictures. Of course, they still revealed one of the main locations. This is the planet Navarro, the one where Din Djarin and Grogu settled at the end of the third season. In general, this planet has been in every season, so its appearance in the new film is definitely not something amazing. But there is still one important detail. Previously, the town on the planet was run by Grief Karga, and unfortunately, earlier this year, the actor Carl Weathers, who played him, died. And in the new film, we have to show a scene saying goodbye to the character. Of course, this is sad news, and I am incredibly sorry that such a good actor and director has left us. I hope he will really be given credit in the film. The next news is that the name Mandalorian and Grogu may not be the final one. Insiders quite admit a name change during the official announcement, which is due to take place in 2025. So treat the sign Mandalorian and Grogu as a draft version, which can either remain or change to something louder. And although the events of the film will focus on Din Djarin and Grogu, Minor characters like Boba Fett and Bo-Katan will also not be left without due attention. And most importantly, we can be shown a reforging of the Dark Saber, the hilt of which was crushed by Moff Gideon. This Mandalorian relic is one of the symbols of normal modern Star Wars and it cannot be so easily drained into the sewer of history. That's why we were shown the revival of the same legendary Mandalorian forge where you can forge and repair anything. The Mandalorians are certainly not Uralan Greymane, but I think they can handle repairing the Dark Saber. In addition, do not forget that right under this very forge in the depths of the Great Lake, the last of the Mythosaur slumbers, which every Mandalorian dreams of riding. And if you also swing the Dark Saber on top of him, you immediately become a god of incarnation. Insiders have learned from their sources at Lucasfilm that John Favreau really wants to show us a huge Mythosaurus in a new film and make it look like movies featuring King Kong or Godzilla. People have always liked to look at huge beasts on the screen and as the second season of The Mandalorian and Boba Fett's book showed, it really arouses the interest of the audience, which is why Favreau wants to conquer the genre of big monsters with the help of Mythosaurus. That's just who exactly will saddle him, it's not clear yet, but Din Djarin is clearly not interested in this, which means it's either Bo-Katan or a grown-up Grogu, from which they want to make a new Mandalorian Jedi. As for the overall plot of the film, according to insiders, in the first half, Din Djarin will work for the New Republic, fulfilling orders to capture fugitive criminals. He will replace Cara Dune for a while, who left the Star Wars universe after the scandal between Gina Carano and Disney. Initially, Cara Dune was supposed to receive a separate series called Rangers of the New Republic, but it was cancelled and apparently, in order not to lose the plot developments, Lucasfilm decided to transfer them to a new film and replace Cara with The Mandalorian. Then the galaxy will be shaken by the return of Grand Admiral Thrawn. Besides him, Jaren and Grogu will be threatened by old enemies, so they will have to leave the cozy house on Navarro and join a large team preparing to confront the resurgent empire. Also, there will be a Palpatine cloning story, which everyone is already tired of. The next news is that Pedro Pascal's return will take place after all. Initially, the actor was not interested in continuing to work on his character in Star Wars due to the fact that he constantly has to wear uncomfortable armor and not show his face. But Lucasfilm apparently managed to interest Pascal, threw a couple of million on top, and most likely promised that in the new film, Jaren would definitely take off his helmet. In my opinion, this is the right decision. It always seems to me that Jaren's story consisted of outdated religious concepts that were ridiculed by other Mandalorians throughout the series, and the further his story progressed, 
the more Jaren himself understood the stupidity of these very concepts and even violated them several times when it came to saving Grogu. But for some reason, the third season reset all this and returned the plot to its starting point. I would like to see Pedro Pascal's face more often in the new film. Now, let's talk about the quality of the film. At first, insiders said that the project's budget would be a modest $120 million. But as work on the film progressed, its budget increased significantly. At the moment, insiders suggest that the final budget of the film will be $200 or $250 million, excluding marketing. Moreover, equipment is being slowly brought to the set, among which expensive cameras necessary for shooting in IMAX format were noticed. This is when the picture on the screen has better detail, expanded borders and colourful colours. The last time Lucasfilm used such technology was when they were working on the first episode of the second season of The Mandalorian at the moment with the Crate Dragon where the boundaries of the screen expanded and the same IMAX poured through the screens. It is quite possible that Jon Favreau wants to show us an epic scene involving a huge beast again and this once again confirms the presence of a Mythosaurus. It is also important that for the film Mandalorian and Grogu, they do not plan to use technology to create digital scenery too often. This is the same system that allowed you to install realistic digital backdrops around the actor right on the set instead of the standard green chromo. Although this technology is called the latest, it allows you to save an already low budget when creating TV series but for films, especially in IMAX format, you still have to bother with computer graphics which is actually good. No matter how Lucasfilm tried to emulate the original trilogy, Star Wars is simply impossible without expensive computer graphics and George Lucas always aspired to it, realizing that this is the only way to see a galaxy far, far away in all its glory. I'm glad that John Favreau also understands this well or at least came to understand it after three seasons. It is also interesting that 15 years ago, John Favreau shot the first Iron Man and literally saved the Marvel Universe from bankruptcy. Now he has a similar mission on his shoulders to bring success to Star Wars on cinema screens. But everything depends not only on him but also on the marketing company. This is why really famous characters should appear in the film, for example, Luke Skywalker. Let's be honest, Luke is the hero of the most significant moments in Mandalorian and Boba Fett's book. If I ask you which moment of these series you remember the most, then I'm sure you will name exactly the dressing down of Dark Stormtroopers and Grogu's training. In addition, Lucasfilm still needs to show fans as much of the normal Luke as possible in order to restore his good name after the disgrace of the 8th episode. But seriously, I just want Skywalker Jr. to become the way he was in the old canon, the way he was shown in the TV series and the game Battlefront 2 or the way he is described in books. Whatever the Mandalorian, Boba Fett, Bo-Katan, Andor and other supporting characters are, Star Wars is a story about the confrontation between the Jedi and the Sith and at least one representative of any side is needed in a big movie. I hope Favreau takes care of it. As I said, the filming of the film Mandalorian and Grogu should begin in about two weeks. Then we will get more interesting news and photos from the set. Subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything. Finally, I want to share my personal opinion. Mandalorian and Grogu is clearly better than New Jedi Order and the Acolyte. That's just that it is necessary to announce this project much earlier so that at the peak of the popularity of the series, the sequel would have more significance than now when it happens spontaneously and after a rather boring third season. One thing I know for sure is that we need to bring the Jedi back to the screens. Although the film is dedicated to the Mandalorian, we need to be shown more memories from Grogu's past as well as a normal version of Luke Skywalker. Only this can guarantee the film's success. Well, that's it for now. The premiere is scheduled for mid-2026 if nothing changes. As always, write your opinion in the comments. Finally, I will ask you for one service. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you all in advance. This is really important to us. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you very soon. May the force be with you.